So this is um, this is a line of um, a line of research that uh, I've been working on together with Jenna, Jenny Glasgow, who's PhD candidate still, <laughs> I think, John, uh, at McGill University, and also part of the ICAN project. Um, and for various circumstances, we sort of um, put a pause on it for a couple of years, and we're now <clears throat> trying to resurrect it. So I thought it's a nice opportunity to uh, share it with you and see um, if you have ideas and insights on sort of yeah, where different directions we could potentially take it, um, um, because it's not yet you know, set in stone. But we'll share with you some of the ideas um, that we are pursuing. Um, so yes, it's a landless, waterless, and wireless political advocacy for land and natural resource rights through social media in Kenya. And the idea here is that perhaps soon enough, uh, Michael Emmanuel will be online at the same time showing us how many communities have registered in live time uh, following the new legislations. Um, in 2015, and Jenny has to get me actually the, the proper source on this, there was um, a, a, piece, a news article in which Kajiado chiefs were ordered to open up social media accounts. Uh, modernity is the way to go. What better way to fight crime than through embracing technology? Hence, social media to interact with locals. 102 chiefs and their assistants from Kajiado North Sub County have been ordered to open Facebook accounts and interact with locals in a bid to enhance security. So this, for us, has raised a number of really interesting research questions. How does social media for, uh, for one, influence the issues raised and the perspectives that get heard. And think about social media in its ability to present text, um, to provide images, and even to provide sort of video and as, as forms of documentation. Um, how, does it, how does social media shape who participates in political activism? Uh, how does social media influence the kinds of alliances or the factions that are forged in debates around particular political issues? Um, how does it interact with other forms of advocacy? Does it compete? Does it replace, eclipse other forms of advocacy that people used to um, perform to get to resolve some of these issues? Or is it coexisting and complementary to these efforts? Um, how does social media does or how does social media work as an effective tool in bringing about real change, um, real action or real change? Does it work? Is it just superficial banter online? Um, or does it actually end up materializing into real um, action and, 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 and change for people? And how does it potentially impact other aspects of social political life apart from the specific issues that it's being used to address? What are the spin-offs? Um, for example, much of my interest has been on sort of Facebook feminism and the role of challenging um, the, the ideas and notions of femininity and masculinity and the roles that people play as they're discussing um, issues around uh, land sales or sand harvesting, as you'll see, right? Um, and this was taken off one of the posts. <laughs> one of the posts uh, that we studied this little billboard, moms, they, they're like dads, only smarter. These are the kinds of things that you find, right? It's uh, all over. Um, yeah, there's a cute term for this now being circulated. Um, we're now doing ethnography. We are now um, occupying new field sites. So we're occupying not only, or we're interacting in both physical sites, um, but now we're also interacting and engaging in um, entering through digital sites. Um, so we have multiple field settings that we're straddling. Um, I have the great advantage that uh, uh, the sort of uh, Kajiado in southern Kenya has already been well presented, um, uh, well represented here, so I don't think I have to go in any background uh, here. Uh, the sites that I've been working in for the past 15 years um, include Elangatawas, Kilonito, and Torose, which um, are all located in Kajiado district. And as um, you all very much know, this is an area that has undergone, has gone from group ranch to private to subdivision, or is still, in the case of Torose, under debate um, whether they will uh, subdivide into private land. Um, and 
about maybe five now, seven years ago, um, uh, electricity and uh, phone technology uh, entered the field sites of Elangatawas. Before then, you could not get phone reception. Um, uh, from that, from the building of the tower, and actually towers in Cadiado, etc., that sort of crept in or allowed signals to come in. Um, now everybody has a phone in these communities and uses it uh, uh, regularly. And uh, many people also um, are active on have smartphones and are active on social media. Uh, this includes a number of forum, uh, fora in which they are debating and discussion, discussing issues around their communities and trying to advocate for social change. Uh, some examples of Facebook pages include Elangato Vas Youth Association, well, these ones listed here. Um, our uh, research focuses on uh, Facebook as one. There are many social media platforms that people are using. Um, Facebook was, at the time that we started this work, um, one of the most popular, and um, the Ilongato Vasa Village Voice was one of the first Facebook pages created. Um, and so we've been following this Facebook page um, closely. The mission of the, this group, of this online group, um, as stated on their page, is um, the group forms individuals from Ilodo Kilani, whose objective is to collectively come together to whistle blow against ills perpetrated by its community members, administration, or political leaders, and act to protect public and natural resources. Um, in terms of the methods of what we did to follow this, um, we first registered and requested permission to participate in these groups and gave an introduction. And so, for example, um, you know, Jenny wrote this Hello Village Voice. Um, I'm writing to introduce our research, this is what we want to do, et cetera, et cetera. And for the most part, we got most welcome, my dear. <laughs> but as we discussed as well, and when we talked about sort of consent and research um, engagement within communities, we also got a couple nasty posts, right? We also got in, in the debate some people kind of mocking us, some people a little bit um, un unhappy with us paying attention to what was going on here as well. Um, we followed all of the posts in the Facebook uh, page um, from its inception, its creation in July um, 2013 until February 15th. And here we got um, the chance to um, analyze the user profiles and whatever information people made available. Usually they'll put their name or some pseudonym, they'll give their age, they'll, they'll give their gender, um, they, they'll give their location where they're from, and, and even additional information, as you know, all know, their marital status and all these things, right? Whether they like to go to the movies, that's also all available. But uh, you, there's quite a, can be quite a wealth of information that people provide in their profiles. Um, and in addition, you can look at all the contributions, you can look at the posts that people put up, um, you can look at the comments, um, that people respond to each post. You can see how many times these posts are shared, how many times they're liked, et cetera, et cetera. So we did the analysis, created a database in which we could analyze some of this. Just to give you an idea of the users um, and sort of, yeah, their basic <coughs> profiles. Um, so total number of users close to 300. I'm sure this has gone up, but uh, gender, predominantly male. Um, Mean age of users, fairly young, 26, right? Uh, place of origin, uh, overwhelming majority from Kenyan Maasai land uh, region, 11% uh, from Greater Kenya and 4% international. Those currently re residing, the majority in Nairobi, um, others uh, a quarter in urban areas of Maasai land. Um, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. And then lo levels of education. So everybody has at least a secondary degree or higher. And the majority, large majority, has tertiary um, education. And then there are a um, number of uh, other groups that they are involved in. Um, and this is, there's an av on average 14 groups per user that they're involved in. And these kind of straddle political, social, and economic types of groups where the focus is on social affairs, economic affairs, or political affairs. 
Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to quickly give you a taste of some of the issues. There are sort of, in a way, endless issues that get that get raised um, on the site, and I just want to give you a, a sense of it by highlighting a few. And the first issue, the first case that I'm going to highlight was actually the one um, that, that, in a sense, gave rise to this um, Facebook um, group, and that's the sand harvesting from the Taroka River. Um, one of the first posts that starts talking about this and raises it as an issue, they write, news reaching my desk, I say that Ilorokliani secondary students went on strike today, protesting to have piped water in the school. Bravo! It's your right to have piped water in school. While our students are fighting to have piped water to the school, our so-called leaders are busy exploiting my poorly informed community with this sand harvesting saga. We have to stand up and say enough is enough. We can't allow this injustice to continue and act as if nothing is happening. We voted for you. Now pay attention here that now they're talking directly to their leaders. They're assuming that they're listening and watching and, and reading these posts, right? So before it was to bravo to the students who we know we recognize what we're doing, we see what you're doing, and we're going to promote what you're, you know, promote what you're doing. Um, we see you. Now we're talking to you leaders because you're also here listening. Um, we voted for you to work and provide service to the people. We said and we will, uh, we said and we will stay, still say the whole community has to be involved in this matter. We will not rest until we accomplish this. And now we call upon all you, Savilo Plania, to come together and fight this cruel act for a better tomorrow for all of us. The journey will be long and tough, but together we can make it. United we stand, inshallah. So there's a lot going on here in terms of the audience. Um, there's recognition that something is happening and spreading the word and giving people the idea that people are acting on this. Um, there's talking directly to those people who we want to change their behavior and to work for us, our politicians, these people who have the responsibility to take action. And then there's an additional, let's do this. Let's come together. Um, and so that, in a way, is, I think, very important in terms of the multiple different roles and things that social media can do, right? It can mobilize, it can inform, it can document, it can report, it can, um, and it's, it, it, it does it all in a sense. A another um, posting uh, in this discussion shortly after takes out, spends some time talking about the serious environmental um, consequences or impacts of um, uh, sand harvesting. And so it's also informing people about what issues are at stake, right? And, it's, and, and then it's also, um, another post is highlighting how, and our young boys are all dropping out of school so that they can have casual labor and, uh, and, and harvest sand, right? So it's, it's making all of these issues, which is perhaps a, a complex you know, system of what you might think are not interrelated parts, it's all happening in this. In, in these discussions, right? It's all kind of coming together. So I think that's quite a powerful tool. Um, and it provides visuals. Here's the proof that it's happening, right? Um, and then some more, some more posts. It's barely a year since we elected you. We've lost half of our sand. Um, I wonder what we'll have after four years. I told him, this is the um, member of County Assembly, the NCA. Uh, I told him that if he was on the wrong side, I wouldn't side with him. Um, and so they're being threatened. Their political leaders are being threatened also on this, uh, on this, on this uh, site. Shortly you know, after all of these discussions, and these discussions span weeks, um, sometimes even months, but um, there was a, an organized through um, Facebook and other forms of social media, uh, a youth march, 300 youth marched to the river and turned back uh, sand harvesting trucks. And again, that was all documented and posted. Um, and there was a meeting with local authorities um, which uh, ended up putting a sort of um, moratorium on sand harvesting from the river for a period of time um, and began a whole um, series of serious discussions about how to handle this issue um, in which the youth who are largely driving this were very involved in that process. This is one example and there are dozens and dozens and dozens. Um, it's sort of Endless what you can um, put on the on 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 this on, on, through this medium, what you can communicate through this medium. 
The second case, which I won't, I won't go into in, into great detail, but um, it's about grab, land grabbing. So um, grabbing of public land in the mile 46 town at the center of Langatawas. And uh, here somebody is you know, explicitly sharing that um, the members felt that the group ranch leaders were taking advantage of the illiteracy of the group ranch members so they can sell the land without the members' knowledge at a throwaway price. So we felt there were injustices that we needed to address. So what did they do? They went and they posted sort of all of the um, um, fraudulently uh, um, um, uh, accessed, uh, uh, fraudulently registered um, uh, land parcels. And it goes on and on. This list is, I just took a snapshot of, of the list. Um, but this is they whistle blow on um, on people who do fraudulent um, uh, land deals, people who just do land deals and say what a pity it was also a terrible price and blah blah blah. So there's a lot of shaming that goes on as well um, through this through this means and a, and a lot of whistle blowing. Um, and again, in the in this grabbing of land in Mile 46 town, um, what resulted from um, quite a lot of, uh, of, of Facebook attention was a general meeting with a very large audience, a march to the offices of the county government, and an order of stay on all public utility land in cases sent to the Na National Land Commission. So there's a suggestion, a really quite good suggestion, that things do get <coughs> done through this, um, uh, but this isn't just banter. And here, I, the, the camel eviction is, this, is a similar example where um, women, in particular, I'm also quite interested in you know, the minority of um, users um, in, in this particular platform, but I think it's increasing quite a bit. Women were quite central in organizing also through, uh, through Facebook to evict um, a large number of camels out of the area um, that they didn't want there anymore. So it raises a lot of interesting questions about how social, well, the questions that, I, um, that I, I started with about how social media functions as a tool for political advocacy um, and what kinds of new alliances it, it forges um, and, but also importantly, what are the exclusions? Um, it's quite clear that this is heavily dominated um, um, by young people of certain characteristics, of certain right, uh, uh, with certain level of education, etc., um, and and predominantly by males so far. But um, yeah, so who's left out, and how is this changing? And uh, are these voices that are not actively posting? Does that actually mean that they're being left out? Right? Are these people who are posting consulting? Where does where does their information come from? If they're sitting in Nairobi, how are they actually getting information about what's going on on the ground? Who are they talking to? Et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's uh, we can't easily say, okay, here's the profile of the users, so everybody else is excluded. No, I think we quite carefully have to understand how this process of information flows and manifests in the end and gets itself communicated here and then what effects that it has after. I'm done, thank you. Okay. <laughs> So please, uh, any questions? Hopefully, questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a technical question. Yeah. I'm not that familiar with, with social media, but uh, Facebook. If you want to join a, a page, don't you have to request and they go down to sign? Yeah. And then either open it up. So most of the people who are excluded probably, if, if that's been actively monitored, wouldn't appear at all. Yeah, so there is an, uh, an, an, an administrator that yeah. has the power to exclude people from the group. And a lot of the people who are not, I, I'm on a few Facebook pages. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, but I'm going to come in. So that's me, and you know what we're called? What? Workers. Workers. That is a, <laughs> so the irony of this for me as well is that I am absolutely not in this world. Like I, techno, ah, technologically, I am incompetent completely, and I only opened a Facebook account for this research. <laughs> I find it very intimidating. But 
Yeah, but yes, there's the, the there's this element of. I was well. amused by a certain contrast that you're, uh, you know, you refer to these government, uh, these politicians, official, well, leaders, community leaders, are ordered to over Facebook accounts. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who was just appointed to the Supreme Court of Newfoundland and was ordered to close his Facebook account, <laughs> so, removing the senior judiciary from the fields of advocacy. <laughs> So how did that end it? Um, which one? I mean, so all of these are still ongoing. Uh, all of these debates and harvesting is still under debate. It's still being regulated um, in, in, in yeah. I'm not fully up to date. I'm not fully up to date on a lot of these um, uh, uh, issues, but um, I know that sand harvesting restarted, and I know that there's um, been a number of attempts to organize it um, and regulate it, which have been problematic and debated. And Did you try to around. follow the politicians who are opening the accounts, and whether how that helped? Yeah, so, so um, and Jenny did a, a number of, um, of interviews with people who were willing to, yeah, and who talked to her about the extent to which they take it seriously, engage with it, are influenced by it, and uh, yeah. And that seems to be quite important, actually. Um, they're paying close attention. Mm -hmm. I'm interested about your topic, uh, especially the part waterways and wireless. Uh, this is uh, a connection we made. Just to find the linkage between water. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think uh, you said something as we are finishing the uh, I mean, I wish you had time to explain more. You said that uh, for me, your analysis is people really in Nairobi who are, who are posting this and uh, I'm assuming the students or uh, young people working there. Uh, did you find out how are they getting this very local information in real time? Assuming that they don't through, through, so it's through phone often, okay. right? So it's, they're really on, like, they're either chatting or yeah, usually chatting, texting, yeah. um, with, uh, with their family and friends that are on the ground. Um, and, 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 yeah, communicating. Those are the lines of communication. And it's amazing how frequent it is. I mean, it, shouldn't, right? it doesn't surprise you, does it? Mm -hmm. you're, on your phone, you're on your phone. I remember you hurting your animals from the guilt. Right. <laughs> you're sitting in your office organizing for where your cattle went, right? So th th they're on the phone often, and uh, they're, in that sense, constantly connected. Um, the, the title, Landless, Waterless, and Wireless, is also speaking directly to the first initial debate on sand, because it's losing land, so quite literally, and it was for the generation, it's in, the, it's in their um, main water source, um, the Taroka River, right, a huge, an important source for water, and the funds that were to be generated um, uh, from the sand harvesting were going to be used to fix a borehole in uh, other neighboring communities, and this was also a big um, issue of debate. So you were de they were debating, they were using their wireless tools to prevent, um, um, to stop, to put an end to landlessness and waterlessness that they saw happening. Um, oh, and then, um, um, you might want to, I mean, if you are continuing this, you might also want to retire and look at uh, another forum, what's up? <laughs> uh, it's also yes. becoming more yeah, yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People no. create groups and they invite people um, all kinds of uh, discussions going there, and uh, it's a little private and, and restricted. And uh, and um, with that, there's also the ability of sharing photos much more easily and documents. Yes, and um, I think just uh, to add on, on what you were saying, yeah, I think it's uh, social media has really emerged as a very powerful tool for local mobilization and people to act very quickly. And um, I think it's because just the technology is dispersed in people in different areas that you, I mean, it's almost impossible to, 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 to control and, uh, and restrict. And, uh, and that is a very powerful tool. Uh, we had a, an incident that I was involved in um, on the Chopin issue. Um, uh, there's um, I mean, a, a land case uh, in an area that I did research in. And, uh, the uh, well, in community lunch, um, 
planned uh, a group that was being auctioned. And I saw <laughs> an advert in the, in the papers and at 10 o'clock in the morning, I, I, mean, I, I wrote something and posted it on Facebook together with a photo of that thing. The events unfolded from that particular incident by 7 o'clock. Um, this evening, is 10 in the morning? Yes. By 7 in the evening? By 7 in the evening. In the sitting in the, in the boardroom, <coughs> the Minister of uh, Interior Security with uh, a top legal advisor, you know, the President, uh, uh, two governors uh, from Narok and Kajiado, the entire government was sitting there listening to this particular issue. And I think that's it there. Incredible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Within seven hours, yeah. you had a sitting, you had people coming from everywhere. It was just like, mm -hmm. I mean, the phone was literally great. Yeah. <laughs> people trying to know why. And this makes, this is a little bit what um, I also find, apart from my technical technological incompetence, I find intimidating is the pace at which this happens, right? Yeah. So we all have, uh, Anthropologists are people who, regardless of discipline, do work in the fields. Um, it used to be a little bit easier to kind of stop our research and say, like, okay, I'll go home from the field and write it up, and it's contained. And but now it lives on every day when your phone vibrates. <laughs> There's a new development. <laughs> when you stop, when you when you finish this, right? So now you know. Given the fact that we've also put this to rest for a couple of years, yes, we're terribly behind, right? Like the WhatsApp is, I'm sure, maybe even eclipse this, this, yeah. right? And and WhatsApp is a little trickier to get in because it's much more private, much more contained, right? With which groups do we? So it's an this netnography is quite intimidating, I think, to navigate. But I think it's powerful and important, and we should be there, right? We should be paying attention to this because it's such an important. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if, uh, uh, given age orientations and affiliations in Maasai society, whether there are a number of these, but they tend to be really focused primarily on a particular uh, interest group that may be defined largely by, uh, by peers. And I think the question may be as much for Stephen as you. Yes, certainly a uh, uh, particular age category um, is more involved uh, in this one. Simply because you have to be able to read, you must have a smartphone, not just a ordinary phone, and uh, you must be able to know how to create a Facebook account and to join this group. So that automatically exposes your um, ordinary and illiterate um, old mama out there. But, uh, and that's why I was asking Carol, uh, I mean, how do these people, I mean, and that was captured when you were last time, uh, even found anything about the linkages between these categories of people who are not schooled, uh, uh, and how, my, how they pass information. And my assumption is that they speak their children, and I speak to my mom, and she tells me these things, and out of that, I take that information. So I think uh, they are excluded in the sense that they can participate actively, but if they have connections to people who participate in these groups, then their voices are in there, but not in their own words. Yeah. I, uh, I, pre I presented this at, a, uh, at, a, at another conference in which in the audience there was a Ugandan mother who at the end of the talk, I actually presented more focused on the Facebook feminism, so at the end of the talk was like, oh no! I'm always trying to stop my son from putting what, like to stop him from being on his phone all the time, and this is just the wrong approach, <laughs> right? She was like, it gave recognition, and like, oh no, 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 I should continue to keep mm. fostering the importance. I thought he was just playing games, you know. Mine, mine is just a comment that um, um, it just surprises how much social media is out there, and when you even assume that uh, pastoral is I'm not going to school. I have seen my own relative, someone who's not been to school, has a Facebook. So I'm like, there's just a Morani out there, yeah. and he's, he has a Facebook. Yeah. Like when I travel, the same way of Miko says, uh, the siblings will show my mom, oh, she's here, and then when I get home, I saw that picture, I mean, you know. So it's, in as much as they are not able to fully participate yeah. in one way or another, yeah. they know this is going on, and they know yeah. there's internet, they know there's Facebook. 
Yeah. And so it's out there. Yeah. We, we can't ignore it anymore. Yeah. 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 Now the WhatsApp groups, I think, are taking up more than the, the, the Facebook groups. I think yeah. uh, WhatsApp groups are the, the in thing now. And John? Sand harvesting is, a, is an industry. And uh, reaping material on Laikipia, um, there you've got a group of people who are workers, you've got a group of people driving trucks, you've got somebody who's taking the money yeah. because it's, they have to pay a, a fee and then it gets distributed in a certain way. Um, so I haven't quite concluded why would it, why is it such a bad thing having a sand harvesting? Is it because it's a finite uh, resource that will be finished in a while? I, so I think that there were a couple of different dimensions. It was the, the, the increasing concern of the scarcity of the resource and how removing sand from like the Toroka River might affect water, the water table and also right, so have it, the, the ecological, the environmental impact of removing all of the sand. It was also who benefits um, what share of the revenue and profit of this sand goes to the community? Who gets the jobs of um, loading the trucks or digging the sand, right? So there are a, lot, a huge group of young people who want that opportunity. How does that get organized so that, and are they getting, you know, so are they getting a good deal? Are they getting the chance to do it? Um, are they, uh, drop, you know, leaving school or other important obligations in order for this? quick fix of income that is, right? So there's all sorts of issues around it where the profits, even if you have a, a properly uh, or, or sort of a reasonably regulated um, uh, uh, system for sharing the, uh, the, the, the labor opportunities or something, if, um, if the community has decided to tax, uh, to tax it and charge some sort of levy that goes to the community, where is that um, going? Is that being invested in the proper? In, in well, it's, not, it's not about doing it or not doing it. It's how, how it's regulated. It. It's also about doing too sure. much of it. Um, it's also yeah. about the the actual impact, like the environmental impacts of um, especially in water. Yeah. Because you know, when the water is there, the water gets stored in the, in the sand. So the more sand you scoop out, the water levels go down, and uh, it gets to a time when you. If you don't have sand, you can't get water in the dry season. But what it was said about uh, youth sometimes uh, getting enticed to leave school um, mm -hmm. to, to go and get the quick money that they get from loading sand um, is a big factor. Not to mention that um, uh, the trucks as they go to the rivers, uh, they just don't go to one particular point. You know, they have to go around, mm -hmm. and in the process they. Uh, destroy the mines. Yeah, the damage on the of the road, and in Alangatawas, this is so apparent, right? With KMQ quarry, all these heavy trucks that just completely destroy these yeah. roads, right? And uh, in dry areas, uh, when you create a depression, then it rains, and then it becomes a, a little, a little, little crevice in the expanding. So you see the problems in Alangatawas now. You just we go down, 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 and they totally destroy the mines. So, um, this is a great discussion. <laughs> one last question, a very fast one, short, and a short answer, and then, we're, we're, then we go away. Well, one thing, uh, we, use, uh, we use social media within the organization, or individually. Or when you travel there, you, you update the office on traveling. But I, I think what uh, people overlook is that it has a lot of, has a lot of illegal implications. Legal. legal implications, which a lot of users are not aware. So uploading pictures, shut down children yeah. sometimes, that's a lot of. So what we are doing right now, we, we've trained a fast batch of uh, uh, activists on this. We bring in uh, guys who deal with this, especially well-known uh, journalists. So we are, we are coming up with a small money. We train activists who are using what they, what they need to, what what actually you need to report, yeah. uh, how you report it, yeah. and uh, see yeah. what kind of pictures, see consent uh, from uh, uh, the pictures, yeah. and the of the pictures, yeah. and this kind of thing. So yeah, 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 very very important, right? Because you can really undercut your your advocacy and your work if you do things wrong. Yeah. You can face a lawsuit.
Thank you. Thank you so much.